Black and Paper presents an interview with Richard Williams, author of the book, Why Cities Look the Way They Do. Reporter and Black and Paper contributor Steve Yates discusses with Richard the reasons why and how humans interact in modern urban surroundings. In your introduction, um, you said that the, the book, the theme of the book, is going to be talking about cities as processes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that as an anchor point, is, is that your like overriding philosophy in how, how you interpret cities, you know, um, you, you feel that really is the model as to why cities are what they are today? Yeah, um, well, I suppose, um, I mean, you know, my, my day job, I'm, I'm, I'm an art historian, so, mm. uh, you know, I've, got, I've, I've been in that, that um, area for, for a long time, and I've got head of, head of art history um, uh, at Edinburgh, and, and there, there's, there's a tendency um, to, to look at architecture and you know more broadly to look at cities as um, as monuments and things that don't change, and uh, that you know that, that that's one thing that's always seemed an unrealistic to thing to to um, to um, to think you know because yeah. the buildings just inevitably do change you know they, they people add things to them they get knocked down you know? <laughs> um, so so that that seemed unrealistic. The, the other thing I mean slightly more more. Um, uh, nuanced uh, argument was, was was to do with um, what what in the humanities tends to get you know called uh, authorship as an idea. So if you, you know okay, so it, the I mean in, in an area like um, you know English or or, um, or art history, then you know there's always, always a lot of discussion about authorship. You know whether you should talk about uh, object whether they're art objects or books or whatever, whether you should you should attribute the production to a single person or, or, or not. And you know, when I grew up at a time or studied at a time when when the idea of that that you know traditional notion of authorship was coming under question and people started to sort of you know, get rather um, uh, suspicious of notions of genius and you know all of that. And I think you know I think, you know I think you, you know you get that you you understand that that idea. And the the um, so uh, and, and I wanted to to really. Um, to, to apply that a little bit to cities, because I, I think we, we you know, habitually we, we tend to think about cities in, in the same conventional way. So we, you know, we assume that you know it, that they must be the, the work of a person, you know, whether it's whether it's an architect or whether it's you know, a planner or you know it's a, a politician or whatever. And uh, you know, you think about just the number of books which which um, speak about cities in those terms. And so I wanted to get away from that and, and yeah. to think about um, cities as, as more complex, more organic. And I'm particularly yes. interested in the way that um, that, uh, or that cities, or in fact, all objects, you know, are, are, a, are a collective um, production. And, and particularly how um, things happen in the world that, that are not foreseen. And uh, the, it's you know the law, the law of unintended consequences. I'm always interested in that, and, sure. <laughs> and it, you know it, it, that that always needs to be accommodated. So so the idea of process. I mean, it's a, it's a catch-all word. Yeah, of course. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Broad term, but I wanted to to sort of rest the 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 idea of, of the production of, of cities away from you know individual authors and you know individual genius. Or anything like that, uh, and, and and towards the things that are much more collective and involved in, in a way all of us, you know, um, uh, and, and and also to, to be able to to acknowledge things that, that maybe we hadn't thought were going to happen, and, and that, but they may also be important, and they may be important in terms of in terms of how they they they, they make a, a city look um, the way it does. To, to, to title. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we like um, especially nowadays. We seem to be uh, totally in the age of um, conspiracies, and you know this feeling that um, the Illuminati are sort of controlling us and controlling how we yeah. live, and you know, like, like we're almost like puppets on strings or something. You know, and yeah. I think you, I think you get so much of that that you get so taken in by it that it's it really is good to have a more you know uh, on the ground. Sort of point of view. On that's, it's interesting. I mean, that, that's a good point. I'm, um, I, I'm, I, I haven't, I haven't been asked that specifically um, so far. But you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and I, I, um, I, I'm an anti-conspiracy theorist. I mean, I, I know there are. Um, uh, I mean, there are, sometimes there are good reasons for thinking about, uh, you know, conspiratorial terms. You know, and there are people who will argue that 
conspiracy theories are, are just another way of looking at the world. I mean, I, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm just not. I mean, my, my instincts are, are actually to um, or always to to ignore or, or suppress conspiracy theories or, or conspiratorial thinking. I mean, my, my, my basic experience is that things happen by cock up. You know, not, you know, it's that, that phrase known as the cock up or conspiracy. Or nearly always cock up. You know, yes. and, and to, to for, for a conspiracy to happen. There have to be conspirators who can agree with each other. And my, my, my experience in, in, you know, 20 years of trying to run academic departments is, is that trying to get a, a, you know, more than two people to agree about anything is impossible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Know, the idea that there's a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, that, that's, that's a very crude way of looking at it, but it's definitely, you know, it's an, it's an anti-conspiratorial book. But take it to the next stage when you um, talk about money. Um, yeah. Manchester, I guess, was um, pretty much the first um, industrial city as um, as a model of power. But you also talk about, you know, Frederick Engels and Walter ben- Benjamin, who talk about Manchester as a model of power and absence and uh, like a, a lack of interest from the ruling classes. They just went into the city, they ruled the workers, but didn't take much interest in the city itself. Yeah. Um, how do, you know going from that um, time right through the twentieth century to the present, where we got sort of Capitalism, capitalism as arrogance. The um, Fenchurch Fenter, Forty Two building, the the walkie talkie, yeah. yeah. um, yeah. and also of course architecture as function, empty places, just like in the film Blade Runner, as you um, mentioned. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. Just just to be to elaborate on what, what you uh, or to summarise what you put in the um, chapter. Um, yeah, how how did you reach those sorts of points of view? Yeah. Also, what, what? Yeah. I mean, what? What? How important was money? Um, yes. I mean, well, the answer is really important. You know, I think. I mean, probably could have written the whole, the whole book about about money. I mean, you're not going to have buildings or cities. You know, never going to come into being without capital. That's I mean, right. I think um, what what I, what I wanted to do was perhaps um, show in some quite specific ways how forming cities now, and because I think I mean, the, the focus of the whole book is the contemporary world. And, I, and I, I think I wanted to, to, to identify things that were happening now that perhaps weren't happening in, in you know, 30 years ago. Yes. You know, a bit different. Yes. So, um, I mean, one of those things um, was uh, to do with the, um, uh, the peculiar forms that, that have started to appear in uh, places where the, the, there are, you know, where the, the most capital is, is circulating. Um, so the, we want one of the images in the book is, is the, these these super tall skyscrapers in in, in New York. I mean, not, I mean, New York's not the only place, but it's it's particular particularly exaggerated case where they're not just skyscrapers. You know, we all know the theory of skyscrapers. You know, you stack things up so you can extract more rent from a, from a limited floor plate. But this is a it's that tendency but taken to a you know a, a, an astonishing extreme. So it's the it's that. It's the, it, it's, it's the this, this financial engineering that's then then producing you know, literal engineering on, on, on the back of it. You, know, you would not have these buildings exist at all unless there, there was some uh, there was a possibility of, of leveraging out you know really colossal amounts of new capital. So that, that was one thing. Um, I think the um, I think the city of London is important because the uh, one and I've had quite a lot of discussion around around this. Uh, the, the the view that you get in the city of London now with the walkie-talkie building, um, the um, the shard quite close by, well, it's on the on the South Bank, but the the cheese grater, uh, the cheese exactly the cheese grater, and all, all of these these um, sort of very demonstrative buildings, uh, which are clearly upsetting a lot of people, you know, and and um, you know that you know I, I understand that, but the, uh, equally I wanted to say something like. Uh, you have the, the way that the city of London works now is uh, is you know very different to how it worked um, you know forty years ago. Right. So you know there's been you know radical de- deregulation of, of the financial markets. But the way that capital flows is is much much faster than it's ever been. London is is the global centre for, for uh, doing foreign currency transactions. That you know therefore. Uh, it's uh, it's it's representing. I mean, the the, cap, the flows of capital. The capital is is coming from all over the world. You know, a lot of it's coming from from places like you know, China or you know the the Middle East or you know Dubai or whatever. It's it's not at all surprising that that it should then start to be formed in, in the image of Dubai or Abu Dhabi or whatever. 
I mean, is, is that a surprise? I mean, no, not not at all. I mean, it's it, it's um, uh, it, it, it looks it looks the way it looks because it, it is this um, this this extraordinary global financial centre. I mean, if, if it uh, and you know, capital always wants to make itself in its own image. So no, fine, that, that's what it is. I mean, and it, 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 you know, it, it is not the way that it looked in the nineteenth century. No, for, for, for good reason. So, but it, it's. Um, uh, so I mean, you know, for lots of people, that that's a cause for for regret. But then, you know, I, I think um, um, cities uh, just end, uh, end up um, they, they they are what they are. You know, <laughs> so so the city of London it looks the way it looks because of that. It's that kind of place. <laughs> if, I mean, that, if that's not too trite a thing to say. No, no. Um... You know, the, 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 I suppose the, you know, there's always. Um, I mean, architects and, and to a lesser extent planners oft, often try and uh, uh, try and invert that that uh, relationship. So they they often they want to build something that, that will then produce a different kind of life. I mean, I, I'm very suspicious of, of that. You know, so I mean, you, you could rebuild the city of London so that it looks like um, a Disney castle, or you know, or it looks like you know, everything looks like like 17th century Baroque architecture or something. But then you know it, it, it would be in totally dysfunctional. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. I mean, it would it would it would cease being what it was. Yeah. Really. So I mean, you know, thirty years time, it, the city of London may be something else. Yeah. So it may functionally be something else. In which case, well, its architecture will change. And there's, I mean, there are certain buildings. I mean, it'll be interesting to see um, if uh, any of these buildings that have gone up um, eventually become appreciated and be considered, you know. Uh, Iconic of London, but um, yeah. but you know there's there's um, many buildings that uh, don't I, I don't know I mean, like the um, the stock exchange I think on the whole um, yeah. most people um, st- still don't don't love it as a building I mean, so just talk about aesthetics here now you know of course there's functionality yeah. but there's also aesthetics as well I mean I think I think. I think the, the Gherkin as an um, aesthetic building got, I don't know, about a 70% approval rate. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I think people did, you know, did like it. I've got, I've got nothing much against the Gherkin, quite quite like it. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I, mean, I, enjoy, I enjoy walking around the city, but I mean, I, I don't, um, it, it's, uh, it's a product of, of forces which are, uh, you know, things which I, I have no purchase on at all. Um, but, you know, I, I enjoy the spectacle of it. <laughs> you know, it just is what it is. So I'm just going to move to power now, though. Richard, yeah, um, Washington DC, and architecture as like um, in a way to exclude the people. And I think uh, I've never been to LA or Washington actually, but yeah. both cities I understand not just from yourself but from other people too. They're designed in such a way that, well, certainly not for pedestrians, put it that way, and and yeah. even uh, yeah, I mean, with, with power, um, it, it, it seems. There, there, there were two things to say, really. I mean, what one? Um, so the, the first part of that chapter is, is really about saying how um, a, a traditional organize, a tra- traditional understanding of power would 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 produce a, a certain sort of environment. So the the I mean, the, 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 the Washington DC section is is really you know looking at like an Enlightenment understanding of power. So you know the 18th century understanding where you know you, you represent authority by Having very long sight lines, by having monumental buildings, by having symmetry, um, and it, it's a it, it's a repertoire of forms that we you know we, we readily understand. And you know you're 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 sitting in Berlin, and you know there are plenty of bits of Berlin that, that represent that as well. And you've got the, the Reichstag, all, all of that. And so we we, we 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 understand that very readily. So that that was one part of the chapter, just to 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 kind of. of re- Reiterate what we generally understand by an architecture of power, and then the, the second part was was to look at what was happening now, and, I, and the fact that um, you know in 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 you know, the last let's say well since since the Second World War we've become very uneasy about representing power in overt ways. So you know thinking about your your German context, then uh, the um, the choice of Bonn as, as the, the capital of West Germany was a very significant. Symbolic thing to do. I, I didn't talk about Bonn, but actually, you know, I could have done it anyway. Bonn was a very prescient thing to do because it it was about uh, representing power, but in in a, in a kind of um, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a rather sort of anxious way to sort of say that we you know we don't 
we are powerful, but we, we don't really want to to, to show it. We, we want to show that we're, we're somehow, we're humble, you know, we, yes. we have been humbled. We're, we, we're, um, we're closer to, to, to you, we're closer to our, our electorate in scale somehow. Yep. So, so the, the, there's a big chunk of that, that chapter about Edinburgh. And I mean, Edinburgh's not really a global city, but it's certainly in, in respect of um, uh, you know, it, it, the parliament and, and also culture, it certainly has global aspirations. And it, it uh, so the, the, the parliament building, I was interested in, first of all, because it was, uh, uh, it, it was a representation of that that humility, or at least that desire for humility, if that, that makes sense. So you know, instead of instead of make, making a sort of massive triumphal arch, it's the reverse of that. It's about making a building that, that sort of soaks into the into the landscape. That's right. That's so, right. I wish they had done a triumphal arch in lots of ways. I think there's something a bit slightly dishonest about this 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 humble architecture. So so the, that, that was one thing that was going on. The, the other thing uh, with in Edinburgh was the fact that the process of building it was so complicated and you know involved so much argument and debate and, and fundamentally people who could not agree with each other. So you ended up with a building that was designed by a committee, you know, <laughs> of the worst kind, and, and looked like it was designed by a committee of the worst kind because it was all these these different parts which are you know very disparate and, and it's it's hard to read and it, it's right. uh, you know it's an extremely complex building and, and um, I mean I, I you know like I would I, I'm not an architectural critic but I mean I I I have I've, I've always um, I've always found it a difficult building because of its is lack of straightforwardness, um, and you know, I mean, I've been in Edinburgh a long time, and it, it's a it's a city of lawyers and a city of committees, and and, and you know, there's a really opaque uh, quality about it, and there's something about the Parliament that is also very opaque. Yes. <laughs> um, it, it is, uh, you know, sort of pretending to be humble and humane and open and the rest of it, but actually it isn't because it's so hard to read. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I, I think, it, you know, again, it, it's this, this, this idea of it, it is what it is, you know, it, it, inadvertently it represents exactly what it, what it, what it, um, what it is, you know, um, and the architects were trying to represent something more idealistic than that, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 this, this new politics, the Scottish Parliament, this, this, you know, modernised politics that, <laughs> it, it, it might be interesting, Richard, in about fifty years' time, that um, that we're sort of you know they'll, they'll look back at this age and uh, architecture and design as uh, part of sort of uh, franchises and conflicts and everything else, and may, may, maybe these buildings, like the Scottish Parliament building, might you know um, might have a, a movement, um, a retrospective like name attached, attached to itself, yeah. you know. I mean, at the moment, what would we call it? Post post postmodernism or something? We're yeah. Beyond the postmodern. It's, it, it, it is. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I think people generally use the label postmodernism in relation to it. So it's like a late, a late postmodern. Late postmodern. Yeah. And, and there is. There's definitely been a, a, a revival of interest in postmodernism, um, which is good. I mean, I, I, I think it, it was. Um, it was a very curious. Um, Tendency, you know, there's a, a lot going on there. A lot, a lot that was good. I think the difference, if there is a difference between the Scottish Parliament and, and you know, mainstream postmodernism, if you can call it that, uh, it would be that the Scottish Parliament doesn't have any jokes, so it's 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 meant as a serious building. Whereas postmodern architecture, there's nearly always a joke. That's right. You're supposed That's to look right. at it, and you're supposed to, I mean, laugh, but yes. often or um, you know, the like, the, like, the, like, the, like the SIS building which the exactly, MI6 occupied yeah. you know, when I first heard that MI6 had occupied that I thought oh is this some sort of fun you know <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a funny building the MI6 building really yeah. really really odd yes um, um, yeah really really strange just just before we move on, um, yeah, just just briefly tell me, you talked about um, Brussels, which I've, I've also visited, and it's of course it's an yeah. interesting place because it was um, yeah. by default almost it's become the capital, of, unofficial capital of Europe, and of That's course right. yeah. you, you talk about the buildings, uh, you know, the, the EU buildings as as part of the monoculture. It's, it's the fact that Brussels wasn't really affected by the Second World War in terms of. Um, yeah. Uh, damage, bomb damage, but it voluntarily yeah. poured its own old buildings down, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a really odd place, and it's it's been um, 
you know, very enthusiastically demolishing it itself and rebuilding itself. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm very, very keen on Brussels. I must, I must say, it, it's a, a bit, but you know, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't consciously design a city like that. Uh, it, it, it does, um, in a way, it does everything wrong. But uh, it, it's the, it's the fact that it, ha- it has done these, these strange things, and then. You know this this very singular life has emerged in relation to it, and I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and just moving on now to one of the favourite subjects in any uh, medium, um, right. sex. Uh, sex. <laughs> I do that. Uh, there's um. I mean, you might. Uh, I, 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 the, there was um. The, the, uh, there was a previous book, so 2013. Um, I mean, it's not actually just the, the last one, but there was, there was a book in 2013 called, called Sex and Buildings, which was, uh, you know, look at, looking at this um, topic. And so I, I, w- I wanted to return to it, but, that, but Sex and Buildings was, was really about architecture, so I wanted to think about this on a, on a broader... Yes, uh, I understand you. Frame. Um, it, um, yeah, it's... It, it, I, I mean, I don't know whether I, whether I got the right, the right examples there, but the, the, um, what, what I wanted to do was, was to say that... Um, if uh, you know you have um, uh, you know cities are, are, are places where capital markets work, then there are cities where other kinds of markets work. And one you know really important market is a, is a sexual market. Absolutely. So basically, you know you, you go to the cities to make money, but you also go to cities to 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 um, uh, to, to hook up with people, and you know that's that, because that's where everybody is. You know, it's like that's yes. where the money is, but that's where the people are. So, exactly. You know, they, they, so, the, so the sexual economy is really important. Or whether it's just simply in terms of people meeting each other and whatever. So, so within that, uh, I mean, I, I, um, the, I was interested in, in in examples where where it was it was explicit, you know, where there was some thing going on where um, where you know sex was was at stake in, in, in the city. So, so that, I mean, that, that's why I talked about the the um, you know kind of queer. Um, seen in Manchester and yes. other places, yes. and that, that. I mean, I, I mean, I'm the, I, I was sort of on, on the edge of that. And I mean, I'm, I'm straight, but I mean, the, but I'm, you know, I, I was an art history student, and of course, no, nobody is straight. <laughs> and and, it, and it's uh, so, you know, all. So when I was doing a PhD, like sort of, you know, all of my, you know, sort of drinking and socialising was on Canal Street in Manchester. You know, it was all very educational. And that, but you know, and I'm, and, I'm uh, and, and a lot of the. A lot of the most interesting thinking in in um, in you know recent art history has been around this this question has been to do with the, um, sort of queer theory and stuff like that. So I've yeah. kind of been, been yeah. around it. And you um, get a lot of that in film studies as well as as I well, I'm media yeah. studies, you know, as you yeah. As you um, so so it was um, you know they, these were they, they were quite natural questions to explore and and, and then um, well I sort of wanted to, to look at it in terms of popular culture a little bit as well so that, that's why you've got um, and on the one hand you've got there's that sort of introductory bit around Seinfeld and you know I'm a big Seinfeld fan so you know that, that seemed to be um, in, in a very straightforward way that, that was a, um, a piece of popular culture that, that, was, that was linking sex in the city so that you know, every episode of Seinfeld is about you know, some sexual escapade that has happened in some part of the city you know, uh, the, whether they're waking up in somebody's bed, they don't know where they are, or you know, they're constantly sort of going uptown, downtown. And, you know, the, the, the city gets explored through through sexual um, relations and sexual con- conquest. So, I mean, that that was a very, very straightforward popular cultural way of looking at it. And, uh, and so, I wanted to put that out there. And then there was that. There's a section as well about. Um, is it lost, lost in translation? Lost in translation, yeah. yeah. Well, well, just before we get to lost in translation, just to summarise on the um, the gay the gay village aspect, yeah. which I think one can say, like let's say, whether uh, one is gay or straight or metrosexual or or, yeah. or, or the other um, terminologies, I think it's universally because because of tolerance now as well. It's universally seen as a good thing in the sort of uh, yeah. so-called post-industrial. Um, City Absolutely. that you know, yeah. you've got these gay villages, and it's very and it's also um, uh, heterosexuals don't feel intimidated either, especially like in Manchester, it's got a very good you know atmosphere. And it's, yeah, it's, it does. No, I mean, I, I was um, I, I, I was re- really, um, really, really struck by it you because know, I, I sort of been, I've been, well, I'd grown up in, in Manchester as a child, and mm. um, it uh, it you know, had, had um, quite, quite 
as a quite a sort of aggressively normative character when I when I was growing up. You know, drinking and socialising had a you know very normative character to it, and and it was like you you were there was very little room for for difference. You know, yeah. That sort of normative, you know, that kind of normative uh, sexuality, and, and the, you know, the, the, I mean, all the, the sort of drinking and socialising that went along along with that. I mean, it could could be quite 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 aggressive and off off putting, and you know, um, so so coming back into to the city, you know, ten years later, and then discovering this 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 culture that, that, that had emerged along Canal Street, I, I think it's very attractive. It's very 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 attractive. So um, and so and and it was much more than. Uh, than um, saying, you know, it's it's about it's about gay men and you know hooking up and all, all the rest of it. But it, it was it seemed to be much more about creating a culture where where lots of different people were. Uh, were that, um, so anyway, I mean that, that was a good thing. And, and in terms of the book, then you know I was very conscious of the fact that you know nobody in in you know say the you know nineteen seventies would, would have predicted. What happened, or that nobody would have predicted that, that Canal Street would no. become this 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 very valuable piece of real estate uh, at all? You know, I mean, that that would have been ludicrous idea. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, and and yet you know it had so so this 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 um, you know diverse sexual economy has has proved to be a really important real estate driver, and yeah. that you know we we know, we know that, but it's kind of it's such a peculiar story. It needs to be worth. Um, Restating, I, I think. No, lost in translation. No, I really enjoyed that because, as um, a film studies person, um, film person, I, I really, you, know, you, you wrote um, in depth a little bit about that, and it was yeah. very interesting to see, you know get your take on it, or rather, other people's takes on it, which you yeah. you know um, inserted into your um, mm. piece. But um, yeah, I think very interesting how how like. Um, Tokyo in this case, or any metropolis, becomes like the the third the third person by proxy in yeah. a, in a relationship. Yeah, um, that that seemed to be pretty clear. I mean, Lo- Lost in Translation. Uh, it's it's a funny film. Um, I mean, to- totally mainstream film. Yes. You know, yes. it's, it's uh, you know, there's nothing there's nothing very demanding about it. But no. um, it's uh, it's been beautifully photographed, and I, and um, I thought I thought there was I've, I've always enjoyed showing that. To students, just just as a way of um, you know, so sometimes just getting them to think about cities and how you might represent cities and what what aspects of them would be important. And um, so it, you know, I always got a lot from it uh, like that. Uh, so so that's really why it was in. And then yeah, that that idea of the city being this this third character somehow, or you know, a a, a, um, a character that, that enables. Um, Things to happen, or, or in this case, not not really to happen, but nearly to happen. I, th- I thought it was very good. And and, and what's um, th- there are I mean, there are all kinds of problems in the film, and particularly I did you know briefly I mentioned the, the the question of race and how the Japanese are represented, which yeah. is you know problematical. No, yeah, no question about that. But um, the uh, I did I felt that um, it's it's very good. Uh, indeed, at, 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 at creating a sense of sexual tension and then Definitely. sustaining that yes. over yes. two hours, and, and you know, it never really gets resolved. But I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the best things for actually doing that, and doing that in relation to the city. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I, I was I was intrigued by it, and that, it seemed like a good thing to to alight on. I mean, I, you know, there's all there's any number of things I, we, I could have talked about in that chapter, but that, that it seemed like a decent, you know, it's, it's something to to say. Uh, yeah, this is worth looking at. This is in popular culture. This is this is you know familiar, but maybe there's more to it than you think. Yeah, there's there's, there's definitely that. I mean, there's definitely those, those those moments in the film where 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 Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray they're, they're looking out at the city, and uh, but they're they're in the hotel. That's right. But yeah, at those points, the city could be anything. Yeah, th- anything. yeah, that's right. And that, that that seemed to be important somehow. Well, I, I don't, because you mentioned the the Lino Tech Factory in Broadheath, and now you know from the nineteenth century where the where it was like the, the the factory or the in the industrial estate was the city. And it, it, is that is that pretty much what you're? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lino Tech. Um, I mean, I I grew up um, 
or at least, I mean, for, for 10 years, I, I lived around the corner from Line Attack, and right. it was, uh, uh, so, you know, I mean, you, you know, and you know the story, but it, it's, um, it was this, they, they make typesetting machines, and, and it was actually, right. it was an international company, That's um, right. Uh, right. an important company, and uh, they, the, the whole area was, was dominated by that factory, and they, they had, the, they built housing, uh, there was a particular smell that came out of the factory. Um, there was a, a uh, you know a siren at the beginning and the end of the day, and you know so everyone everybody in the neighbourhood knew when the, the, the working day started and finished. There were there were um, shops uh, round about that, that that very much catered to the factory workers. So there were you know places you could buy buy some lunch or whatever. But there were also you know there were cobblers and lots of old fashioned um, shops, and it, it, you know it completely dominated the whole. Area, but and, right. and it, it, gave, it, gave, it gave the the, um, the area a, a texture and a, and a life, um, and there were you know there were sporting associations and football and, and whatever. And That's like, right. You know, it was a whole sort of life around that. Um, yeah, and, and like you say, it was, it was a city in its own right, and, and that um, I just wanted to um, to re- recall that memory in a way because I, I think it. It's gone. <laughs> I can't yeah. think of anywhere. It, 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 you know, not, not, in, not in the UK. I can't. I mean, and it's not very long ago. But you know, it has. That's it right. has, um, It has just just gone. You know, um, I, I don't. There's no no real no real cause for no real cause for for regret there. Uh, I mean, I think um, obviously. Uh, I mean, what, what, do I, what do I say in the book? I mean, um, obviously, the, that, that the 19th century factory no, no longer really existed. <laughs> then, you know, you've got these, these contemporary equivalents, but yes. they're, they're somewhere else. So, you know, mostly, mostly in places where it's cheaper to do manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, well, Germany obviously still has, you know, very substantial um, car manufacturing. Um, but I think uh, it's, it's a bit of an outlier in that, that, that respect. And... Uh, um, and also, the, those plants are working in, in, you know, to quite a different rhythm to, to how they would have been in, in the, um, you know, um, 80, 90 years ago. Um, with, you know, multiple shifts and then all that just in time stuff. So, you know, yes. you have in, inventory piling up, you've got stuff just arriving and then going out again straight away. Yeah, that's right. All of that. um, so, I think the whole sort of rhythms are, uh, are, are different with, with, with manufacturing. I mean, one thing I, you know, sort of alluded to a little bit, but was, was to the way that, you know, what blue or white collar um, working services oriented working has, has changed as well. And you know, so so much of so much of my, my working life is, is, is like this, and, uh, and it has a, an informal quality, which you know uh, would, would have been very odd, you know, a few years ago. I think you know, Silicon Valley. It's pretty much I mean, it's, obviously it's been talked about a lot for different reasons. Uh, because of, of course, you know, Apple and Google and everything else. So, of course, you know, um, very with interest, as with everything else, your um, take on that. But it led me to this idea, you know, shopping malls um, recently have been predicted to be in decline. And it's very, very interesting noting this in Berlin because... They're building more shopping malls, actually, you know, in the empty spaces and everything. Mm. But, but I noticed that um, Potsdam and Platz, mm. one of the shopping malls, there seems to be loads of shops that are, you know, that are vacant. And, uh, oh, they're, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think retail certainly is in is very steep decline. Physical um, retail. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, know, you can see it everywhere, and uh, it's, you know, simply, it's the hollowing out through um, people, you know, shopping. Uh, uh, online, but also, I mean, very you know, clearly, um, with with changes in, in, in labour markets and, and, and with um, property markets as well, and people just aren't accumulating stuff. So I don't know how much stuff you've got, but I mean, <laughs> there, um, you know, we, um, I mean, a storage. I mean, I, I, it's storage facilities. That that's a that's a place. That's something to invest in at the moment. I think. Yes. Um, yes. But you know, re- retail now nah, is finished, isn't it? It's totally finished. I mean, I, I, I can't see, I can't see it really surviving in the same way. I mean, people are obviously interested in, in, in experiences. Like those experience, I mean, I think they're, 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 those those traditional shopping experiences are just in frank decline. Yeah, now. yeah, totally in, in decline. So I mean, it, it poses all sorts of serious questions for the future of um, 
Um, free town. Town. Yes. Oh. What was before? Also in um, No Silicon Valley, there's the uh, NASA... The, there's the NASA... Uh, uh, Ames? Ames that's NASA. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but you said apart, apart from that, there's, there's no real monuments in the area. Yeah. And what came to mind then... It, in, Bearing that in mind, and also these like new towns like Milton Keynes, mm. and, and, and many other uh, new towns in uh, the UK as well, like Warrington, and you know you name them. Um, what, what what do you think about architecture? Like Milton Keynes doesn't doesn't have a landmark, does it? I mean, you can't see anything, can you? Basically, it's all. Uh, I don't, have you? Been, I mean, it's funny you should mention Milton Keynes because I um, I know it's a bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually a big fan of Milton Keynes, but it, it's. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, seriously. Uh, no, yeah, no, no, sure, it sure. Has um, yeah. it, has, it's got, it does. It does have a big shopping centre in the middle. I mean, God knows what the future of that 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 thing is. I mean, no, it's, it's a very weird place. Silicon Valley is a bit different in, in that it's um, it, it's uh, this. You know, on, you know, on the one hand, it's a very powerful place. You know, it's a very powerful place in in, in the imagination and in, in the economy. But it, it's it's. It's, it's not really a place, you know. It's a it's an agglomeration of various places that have sort of grown together. Um, I mean, and it, it is you know, completely um, car oriented. I mean, it's just it's it's freeways and, and suburbs and, and you know it's centreless and whatever. A very hard place to understand or, or, or navigate, uh, um, but kind of fascinating as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think clearly, you know, one thing that has happened in, in the last twenty years is, is that there's been a revival of, of 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 cities in general and a revival of interest in, in urban life. And you know, yes. many people, you know, lots of young people, got, got very attached to the idea of being in cities in a way that you know perhaps they weren't before. Um, so that's, that's an interesting phenomenon. But I, I don't, I honestly don't think that that, that one form of life is, is better than any other form of life. I mean, I, you know, I always, yeah, sure. rather, yeah. Yeah. Re, re, always rather, rather object to the idea that, you know, suburb, suburbs are somehow inferior. Um, That's you know, right. It's yeah. they're, they're different. I mean, you know, and, and then, no, very interesting. You, you mentioned that at the um, mm. at the end, especially in, in uh, regards to Leicester, which I know oh, is, yeah. is your because of your um, family. Your, your, yeah, uh, my, my kids, my kids are down here, so I, in fact, I'm, I'm there right now. And, oh, um, right. So, right. You know that that was uh, it, it's a place that, that you know I could completely by accident really. I've got, got to know quite well, and, yes. and, uh, and I can't, yeah, and, I, and and it's the most sort of unspectacular place but um it, it, it has a lot of good qualities about it and um i i um yeah it, it um i mean all sorts of all sorts of good qualities i mean i've, no, I've never had a bad meal here for example <laughs> you know and people live quite well and it's um it's it's, it's relatively cheap to live and there's, yes. there's more or less full unemployment